when you, when you assess the the interest in HBCUs, I mean, what do you attribute it to? Is it cultural shifts, the uh, the racial justice protests over the last few years, uh, the ability of the schools themselves to better advocate for themselves, uh, and increase a different group of of citizens who have the wealth that they can even contribute to an HBCU. I mean, is it all of those things, or it may, it may be a good a good many of them? But but l l let me say that there is no question that in our country today we are reckoning with the fact that life in this country for certain groups has not improved to the extent that we thought. That was a pretty rude awakening after the Floyd um, uh, murder. Uh, to say to ourselves, you mean that we spent all this time going through civil rights, having executive orders for affirmative action, um, having national programs to uh, improve access, um, and and you mean we're no farther along than than this? I think what that caused us to do, all of us, blacks, whites, everybody, is to say, let's go back and think about the assumptions we made before, um, and the kind of um, uh, the kind of plans uh, enacted. Um, perhaps we should go more directly to the problem and see if there are things that we can do that would have more immediate effect and quite possibly more lasting effect. Well, I mean, you can't get anything more lasting and and more a, a better proof point than HBCUs. Look how long they've existed. Look how long they've been doing the same thing. Look how long they've been overachieving in the face of tremendous uh, barriers. And so the outperformance of HBCUs, I think, came more into focus. Um, and the, uh, the difficulties, I should say, with regard to other institutions also came more into focus. And that is that not enough progress has been made by other types of institutions with regard to access uh, and, and equality. So I think it is the justice movement, for sure, that caused us to look again. Uh, let me say that at my age and having been a child of the civil rights struggle, I'm embarrassed to say how surprised I was uh, to learn that things had not progressed nearly to the degree that we had hoped back in the 60s. I, I'm surprised by how naive I was to think that because particular paragons had succeeded, that we too easily assumed that the problem, so to speak, was fixed. The fact that one person becomes an Ivy League president means nothing, really. It just means that that one person did. It doesn't mean that problems are solved for all time just because we've had some successes with some people being able to get over uh, those hurdles. So now we're going back and doing the groundwork that is so essential, and that is trying to understand the ways in which HBCUs put together a program with all of the uh, difficulties they had that succeeded in getting a third good marshal to be the leader that he was, um, that it succeeded in all of the people um, uh, one of the greatest writers of our period, Toni Morrison. H how does Howard University produce a Toni Morrison? Um, and so now we're, we're looking at that and saying, okay, well, our thoughts about how education works may be a little too primitive. Maybe we're not taking uh, adequate consideration of all of the other parameters that contribute to people being productive citizens, being confident in who they are, being able to be um, a force for good in the country. Maybe we're I mean, doing the work that we should have done long ago. 